Hey, everybody. It's Russell Lehman, motivational speaker, poet, advocate, platform of autism, mental health, and disabilities. And it is that time of year again, back to school. Uh, probably one of the, probably, if not the most stressful time in a child's year, right? Al along with the parents, of course. And when you have a disability, that that stressful, trying challenge is just exacerbated. Uh, I call autism specifically an exacerbation of the human condition. Everything is just turned up a notch. And so it's very stressful going into a brand new environment, such as going back to school, even if there are going to be some familiar things, such as seeing your friends, or maybe it's the same school, or just seeing the same teachers in the hallway. Uh, you know, the transition is very difficult. And it's not necessarily change that's difficult. It's the transition to that change that is difficult. So August, back to school season, can be very trying and challenging. And today I want to ponder what advice would I give myself when I was returning to school. Now, I had to drop out of public school in the fifth grade due to my severe challenges of sensory struggles, severe OCD, depression, clinical separation anxiety, just so much going on. And I didn't receive any accommodations. And so I actually dropped out of public school in the fifth grade and unfortunately never went back. Um, not without trying. I tried to transition back into mainstream school so many times, but it was just uh, let down after let down after let down, to say the least. Very traumatizing and, and disheartening because I wanted to go to school, but I wasn't given the support. So what would I tell myself on those days when I would have to go back to school? I remember in kindergarten, in first grade and second grade. Uh, my mom would take me to school and I just I couldn't let her go. Like I was with her the whole summer and now I'm going to spend almost the entire day without her. That's a very drastic change. Like, can I ease into this a little bit? So I would just start crying and then she would hesitantly leave, not wanting to. But, you know, I also didn't want her to stay because she was going to be the only mom in the classroom and I didn't want to stand out even more than I did. And so I don't know if I would say anything to my younger self. I think I would just give myself a huge, giant hug. You know, maybe pat myself on the head and, and say, Russell, it's, it's not going to be easy. You know, uh, but, it, but it's worth it. You're going to go through these challenges because you're strong enough to handle them. And I think if I knew at such a young age that this difficulty would be persistent throughout my life, I think I would have maybe been a little bit more accepting to it rather than always hoping this was the last time I was going to struggle and then being frustrated when that struggle would come back. I think if I realized that this was a lifelong disorder, disability, that I would have maybe come to, again, some form of acceptance early on where I knew this this was going to come back, even though it's maybe have a good day tomorrow or maybe later this day I'll be feeling better. It's, these symptoms are going to come back. And so, yeah, I don't know if I would say anything, honestly. Um, you know, words don't mean a whole lot. They can, obviously, you know, when it comes from somebody who's trying to help you in the moment of struggle. Uh but rarely do people talk to themselves, right? We think about ourselves. And, uh, you know, you have to think about yourself before you talk about yourself. And oftentimes what we think about ourselves is not the best, are not the best thoughts. <laughs> so I would just get out of that whole, you know, treacherous territory and, you know, communicate with myself through action, through the hug through the smile, through the look and making eye contact with myself and, and letting my know, letting my younger self know that I see him and that I don't just hear him, but I am actively listening to him and I am physically there for him. I feel like those physical components are much more powerful than words can ever be. And the great thing about that is no matter your disability, you can always communicate, oftentimes without words. We focus far too much on words when, you know, it's the actions, the communicative actions that matter, that that not just people hear that we support them, but that we're showing how we support them. And so I would just show my younger self that I, I support him. 
And if I were to speak a few words, I'd say, Russell, be patient. Life might not get easier. It might actually get a hell of a lot more difficult. But it does get better. And you, Russell, you have to believe this. Because if you don't believe that, then, then what is the point, right? We have to hold on to something. And so I would just wrap this all up in a nice bow for message, whether it's a, a student listening to this, a, a service provider, a parent, a teacher. We all suffer in life. Maybe it's the one thing we all have in common. Maybe the only thing. Ironic how we don't talk about it with each other, though. So it feels like we are the only ones who suffer. It's okay to suffer. It's okay to be scared. It's okay to feel like crying. I feel like crying now, just reflecting on this on my past school days. And it's okay to feel like giving up. Just don't. Probably with this, if, if you feel like crying, cry. If you feel like yelling, yell. But when you feel like giving up, don't. Because it does get better and we must believe this. We must believe this because it's true. And we have to believe what's true. It might not get easier, but it gets better. The trick is you just have to believe it. And I believe in you, and you too, if not already, will come to believe in yourself as well.